Hi, my name is Luna and welcome back to Lunaria. Today I'm doing another journal with me, but it's a bit different today since I'm going to be giving you some tips again. I already did a video like this, but it's a bit different because I think it's broken down in a more clear way. And it's also more structured. And it's inspired by recently looking over at my first journal in particular, but my journals in general, and looking at what I've really improved on, and also what a lot of people in the journaling community seem to like and think is good. So in this video, I will be running through what I think personally makes a good journal spread and what other people would probably agree on what makes a good journal spread. And I'll be running through this through an example of my own journal spread in my new developed style that I've had recently in comparison with my older journal spreads, which you'll see at the end, which are very different and underdeveloped. My first tip which isn't part of the main free tips I want to give, but is still important, is colours. I often choose a colour palette before I start journaling because I think it's a very key part of what makes a journal spread really aesthetic, is having good colours that match well together and a consistent colour theme throughout the journal spread. I think it's very important personally. And now I'm moving on to what I call the trifecta, the three L's which I always see in journal spreads that seem to do really well and what other people seem to comment on. Lettering, layering, and layout. I always start my journal spreads with lettering. And there's a few general tips I can give on this, which is try not to make your lettering too thick. If you do that, it tends to look quite chunky and blocky and more smudged. I would try to go with thinner lettering in general, but also make sure there's a good thickness difference across your lettering. I find makes it more aesthetic. And of course, be careful with your outline if you're doing it after you've done your blending in particular. Make sure to be careful with it, otherwise the outline can bleed and it doesn't look particularly nice. I did an example in the corner here of how it looks differently when you do the outline after you've done all the blending. In this particular example, it doesn't look particularly bad, but in past experience, I found it more difficult to make it look more even and not so smudged this way. Lettering is the kind of thing, though, that you really do just get better with time. You have to practice again and again before you do well at it, generally speaking, unless you've already had quite a bit of experience with it or with art in general, I find, so practice makes perfect. Another quick tip for lettering that I find quite useful is making unique highlights that stand out. Highlights make a huge difference on lettering, so definitely spend time on them because it's worth it. Moving on to the next two out of three, um, big three, as I like to call them, the three L's. Layering and layout, which I've grouped together because I think they go hand in hand. I don't particularly do one before the other, maybe my general layout first, but the layering tends to 
coexist with the layout because I decide on the layout as I introduce my layering. It might be different for different people. People might plan their layout in general before they even start layering, but I find that quite difficult until I've actually torn up bits of paper and started placing stickers to actually decide how I want my layout to look. My general tip for layout is to just take time with it. Try things in multiple different places until it just looks pleasing to your eye. You don't need to settle with just the first thing that you think looks alright. Try again and again until you think that it looks as aesthetic as it can, and I think that's the best you can do. As for layering, I've already given tips on this before, but for me what makes good layering is three-dimensional making it as three-dimensional as possible so don't necessarily entirely glue stuff down so that it's flat scrunch bits of paper up so it's more three-dimensional and pops out more use stickers and washi tape instead of glue it contributes to the layering putting things underneath and on top and so on and so forth And again, colors come into play during the creation of the layout and the layering because often my journaling is in quite an improvised style because I can't decide or stick to an original plan that I come up with. So I improvise and so I pick out certain stickers and washi tapes at the time which seem to suit the color palettes and often I change my mind halfway through and decide to take a sticker off. Not because it doesn't look like a nice sticker but because I don't think it quite fits the color theme. So one of the longest parts of journaling in my opinion is just making sure everything matches up perfectly or not even necessarily perfectly but good enough for you to think yeah that looks good. I realized I never actually introduced the topic of this journal spread, which is Min Sung, um, one of my favorite Stray Kids ships. Um, even if you just view the ship in a platonic friendly way, I, I just love it. I think they're really adorable together and they clearly have a great bond. And I thought since I was really kind of into it right now, the and appreciating the ship it would be a good way to fill this other half of a two-page spread
now I'm coming to the end of this journal spread as you can see by the fact that I'm doing my writing which I always do last and yeah I'm pretty proud of how this journal spread turned out it's what I would call a pretty standard journal spread for me at this point in my journaling hobby I add my details last as well which is another thing that made journal spreads quite successful but isn't one of the main tips I would give and so here it is, just a little overview of the complete journal spread. And now for the last part of this video, I just want to look at some growth. Because I want to show you guys that just because I seem to be good at journaling now doesn't mean I always was. This journal spread I'm showing is from my first ever journal and it was a spread that at the time I remember being really proud of. It was an amazing experience because I got to collaborate with Mihan Journal who was a huge inspiration for me at the time and largely inspired my journaling. And I was so proud of it but looking back on it I don't think it's a particularly good spread. The lettering is very messy, the outline is has bled completely. It's kind of a mess, there's not really any layering or layout, but that just shows how much I've grown and I feel like these tips really apply to that journal spread. So I hope you can get something out of this, I hope these tips help you, and thank you so much for watching, and like and subscribe for more. Thank you, bye.